Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and uh, check it out, I've got a package. This actually came from uh, France, specifically from a website called uh, Retro Game Supply. Um, now, there, well, let me just open it first and then we'll talk about it. So, inside we have a couple of power supplies. Now, that may not seem that exciting, but uh, alright, so the reason this came about. Uh, recently, I completed my fifth video game retro, uh, generation retrospective, uh, and one of the videos, of course, was about the Jaguar and the Jaguar CD here. Now, in that video, I said one of the faults with the console was that it required two power supplies to, you know, to fuel both the Jaguar and the Jaguar CD, and that there are actually third-party alternatives, basically where you get like one power cable that powers both. Ultimately, is what you're uh, looking at there. I said that exists because it does. However, I was unable to find any because they were sold out everywhere. And a bunch of people on the video said, hey, actually there's this uh, website called Retro Game Supply that does in fact have them in stock if you want to check that out. So sure enough, I did. And um, I went ahead and I bought it. And while I was there, I was looking through the website and just seeing what other alternatives they had. They had, um, they had some stuff for the PC Engine and the PC Engine uh, CD add-on, as well as the Genesis with the 32X and the Sega CD and different combinations therein, slash Mega Drive. Um, and there was one that caught my eye, though, because I already have the Sega CD Genesis 32X all-in-one. I got that from a Retro Game Cave, and it's worked perfectly ever since I got it, and I'm hoping that these live up to that. But as you probably concluded, the other one I picked up was for this. This is the Famicom, we know it as the NES over here, uh, and the Famicom Disk System, which is an add-on that we did not get. Um, this is a console that I have an interesting history with, uh, because I got this NES, I got the Famicom from a very generous Canadian named Mark, who I did a video on it a while back. He just gave this to me for free. Very, hell of a nice guy. Um, and he also gave me a, um, a replacement rubber band for this, the Famicom Disk System. Now, my Famicom Disk System does not actually work, but I knew that when I got it. I now am one step closer to being able to actually use it. <laughs> now, I actually have a power supply for it. So, that's going to kind of light a fire under my ass and hopefully try to get that band installed, though I'm not necessarily confident I can do it myself, but anyway. Uh, point is, I will now have that capability, and I'll have this. Now, I want to show you these um, up close here. This is the uh, the one for the Famicom. Uh, now, this one has a more traditional uh, power brick type of design, where this is the part that plugs into the wall, and then this part splits off and gets plugged into the back of both pieces of the console. Now, this one is for the Atari Jaguar, and the uh, Jaguar CD. This is a very different type of design. This is um, the one I would strive for, though I say that as someone who has no engineering skills whatsoever. Uh, so there might be a reason they don't always come like this. But this is more of a laptop style design where this part, you know, both goes into both parts of the console. And then in the middle, this is the power supply, like, like I said, like a laptop. And then you take a cable at the other end, you plug it in, and then you plug that into the wall and there's, that's how you get your power. Now, you might have noticed this cable was sitting out here and not in the package. Now, the reason for that is when you're, when you're on their website and you're selecting which consoles you want, um, be aware to also select your region if you decide to do this. Uh, they have ones very specific for Europe. They have ones that are specific for North America. And with the cables like this, uh, they give you the option to buy the power cable. Now, at first you might be like, well, why do you, if I'm buying the power cable, why are you asking if I want to buy the power cable? Important question. Uh, you have the option of basically just buying this part of it, which is what I did, um, or you could buy it and have it come with this part. Now, the reason you might not want to buy it, when it uh, where it comes with this part is because, well, first of all, it adds a couple more bucks to the uh, expense of the whole thing, but also, this cable is incredibly common, and I'd be very willing to bet you probably have one of these around. Uh, the reason I'm that confident is it is a standard two-prong, almost uh, figure-eight style cable, and you would have used this on your original Fat PS1, Fat PS2, Slim PS3, Super Slim PS3, PS4, Original Xbox, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast. I had a bunch of these laying around and I'm betting you do too. So there's really no reason to buy one of these as well. So that's why I didn't bother. Got the console hooked up here. I actually have Rayman running in it through RGB SCART. That's actually the uh, PlayStation memory card that's been modified for RGB SCART. That's actually the video output on this thing. Uh, so the power supply lights up when it's connected, which is good. Um, and you can see up there on the TV, Rayman. I know it's 
certainly not doing it justice, but the, the picture quality is actually really, really good. Uh, I know the lighting and everything in here is not doing that justice, but uh, that's not really the point. But uh, yeah, this looks great. So I'm actually going to, just to dispel any conspiracy theories, I swear to you, it's all plugged in there. Both cables and at the same time connected and then right back over to this. But uh, nevertheless, let's go ahead and uh, just plug in something into the CD drive and take out cartridge there. I'm gonna pop in uh, Highlander. Yeah, again, there was a Highlander game for the Jaguar CD. And we'll put that in there one-handed, which is not the best idea, but yeah. So, doesn't. yeah, this is one thing I really hate about the Jaguar, is that it, if it doesn't detect a totally awesome, amazing, clean connection, it will just do this where it will just turn on and off for no reason. So annoying. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, isn't this fun? Thanks, Atari. It's really reliable design here. This is ridiculous. Oh yeah, now it works. Great. Oh, no it doesn't. Ugh, there we go. Isn't that fucking ridiculous? That's a terrible design. But anyway, there you go. And don't think that's the power supply. That happens all the time with the fucking Jaguar. It's like, that is just a terrible, terrible design. Now, I talked about that in my Atari Jaguar video. Basically, if the console can't read a totally perfect, clean connection, it will just not power on. It won't even try, which is just fucking stupid. But anyway, there you go. There's a Highlander. Again, the CD device, of course, working and, and sufficiently powered by this. Um, this is actually very cold, so that's, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let it run for a while and uh, see what the results are. All right, I've got the uh, Famicom and Famicom Disk System hooked up here. As you can see, the power supply is there, connects into the back. Um, so there's no LED on the Famicom, though, but there is one on the Disk System. So uh, we'll see if it works. <laughs> Turn it on. Ah, good. It does, it does, in fact, get power. Now, again, I have no game. The thing that's in there is um, this, like, cardboard thing that it came with. But... Uh, yeah, okay, the point is it's getting power, and that's uh, that, that means this is getting power as well, so there you go, we know that works. So I'm basically just going to leave this and the Jaguar CD on and just kind of see how they continue to perform. I'll leave them on for a little while and see if they get like really, these things get hot or anything like that, and uh, I'll let you know. Alright, so I've been using these for a little while, and I, I have no serious complaints as far as their reliability, they seem to do the job just fine. They get, you know, a little warm, but nothing to be concerned about. It seems like pretty normal uh, heat that you would expect from a device like this. So I have no complaints as far as functionality or anything like that. The complaints I have are small and really nothing to worry yourself about, but I do want to make you aware of it. Uh, the first one is the obvious one. It's like, grr, why isn't this the same design as this, grr. Now, again, I'm not an engineer, so maybe there's a totally legitimate reason why this isn't designed this way. I don't know. It was just one of those things that would have been nice, but maybe that wasn't possible for some reason. But that certainly doesn't actually affect performance. It's just one of those things like on a power strip that's annoying. However, to their credit, they designed it this way so that it doesn't take up the entire block as opposed to designing it, you know, like this, where it takes up like three spots all at once or whatever, like the old Genesis ones did. So that's good. Um, the other thing that's kind of bizarre to me, and maybe this is some sort of copyright licensing type of issue, neither of them actually specify what console they're for, which is kind of odd to me. Um, I'm really glad, actually, that I looked up on their website what they were going to look like before I started filming this video, because I would have looked at them like, I don't, I don't know which one goes to which. Um, but yes, this laptop style one is for the Jaguar, and this one's for the Famicom. Um, so personally, I would say, you know, label them yourself, because it doesn't say anywhere what it's for and you might just get confused, and I think that was kind of an odd choice, but maybe there's some legal reason they couldn't have done that, so I don't know. But uh, beyond that, I, I really have no complaints. They got the job done just fine. Nothing, they, our consoles are both working. Um, they didn't short out, so I don't know. I, I'm guessing it's just as reliable as the Sega Trio M1 I did a video on a few years ago. Uh, maybe it wasn't a few years ago, like a year ago, whatever. That thing works great to this day. I use it a lot, and so I'm, I'm assuming that these will adequately do that as well. So. 
Just wanted to make you guys aware of this thing because a lot of people told me about it and I thought, hey, there's probably at least a few of you who have these combinations of consoles and uh, would like to be able to only use one power supply. So there are uh, uh, there are alternatives. You There are places you can go to get these things. So there you go. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all later.